Hey guys, CEO Cannon here from Fiction Atlas Press, bringing you your monthly marketing tip. And this month we have an Ask Me Anything. The first question comes from Isra Sravenhart. I hope I said your name right. What is the best selling genre in your opinion right now? This is kind of a doozy because as trends rise and fall, the answer kind of fluctuates. Um, but I was going to say romance. Romance is pretty much always going to be top dog. They sell the most. Um, they will probably always be top dog. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just that popular. But that doesn't mean that you need to kind of scrap what you're doing right now and go write romance. It's actually a really very competitive, um, especially contemporary romance, is a very competitive and... Um, really saturated genre so it's hard to break into because of that. I'm kind of of the opinion that you should write what you want to write because there's room in every genre for a great story and it really depends on how you present the product and how you market the product to whether or not it's going to be a bestseller. It's not as dependent on a genre. Of course there are some things that are not as popular but for the most part, almost any book can be a bestseller in its category and sell plenty of books for the author if the marketing is done right. If it has a cover that is appealing and on genre, if it has a compelling blurb, and if the story is good. So, you know, I can give a couple predictions. Here are some genres that I think are doing really well right now. Um, fantasy romance. Fantasy retellings uh, and mytholog mythological reimaginings are doing really good. Psychological thrillers are doing great. Uh, paranormal cozies are on the rise. And there's rom-coms that are doing really great right now. And for sci-fi, there's First Contact that's doing really, really good right now. Some genres that I know are a little bit stagnant at the moment are post-apocalyptic and dystopian, which that's no surprise because look at the world we're living in right now. And uh, Superhero is surprisingly not doing very well, even with the popularity of Marvel and DC and all these movies that are coming out with superheroes. They're just, it just hasn't really seen an uptick. Um, and hard sci-fi is not doing so well right now. Okay, our next question is from Jenna McCall. And she says, what makes the best kind of reader magnet? A bonus scene, same world novella, same genre novella, a book, etc." And what if you aren't as productive as so many are and are limited to what you can create? How to prioritize. Okay, this greatly depends on your goals and what you want your subscribers to do and where you advertise. Bonus scenes are great for the back of your book. You've actually built trust with that subscriber, with that person who has read your book and getting them onto your list is really important because those are gonna be your most engaged subscribers usually. Um, so it's kind of like a reward for reading your book. You built that level of trust. Now here's some more. Go look at what else I can do with them. Same world and same character novellas are wonderful for introducing your world and your characters to new readers and getting them excited to read your full series, your full story. And these would be your main landing pages for like on your website. Um, ones that you're going to use for like swaps on story origin and places like that and book funnel and ones that you're going to use for things if you're going to be targeting at like social media ads these are the ones that are going to really introduce what you have to offer same genre novellas are best when you want to show off your writing style um, this gains new fans and it's perfect for those especially who are not as prolific and write short stories or who write standalones instead of series and if you don't have a lot of content, you don't really need to focus on having multiple um, magnets coming in. You only really need to focus on one. Uh, a same genre magnet will do just as fine as any of the other ones. And it's really easy to do. You can use a short story or something that you've got the rights back to that you've written before. And it's not about quantity, especially in this case, it's about quality. So really make that shine so you can show them what you can do. Okay, the third question we have is from Tracy Lovelett, and it says, what are your top three tips for getting readers to sign up and engage with your newsletter? Well, first off, you wanna target the right readers to your newsletter. Uh, you wanna target people who are genuinely interested in your genre. Um, think of this as like an arrow. If you're shooting an arrow and you wanna win the game, you're gonna to try to shoot that arrow as close to the middle of the target as you can get. 
And that's kind of what this, this sort of marketing is. It's, it's getting people, the right people, right there where you want them. Um, you can do this by genre targeting your marketing efforts, um, either with genre targeted giveaways, um, group swaps and events like on Story Origin or Book Funnel, uh, or via really targeted social media ads where you use comparable authors um, and people who are interested in things that are similar to what you're doing. So now, once you've gotten the right people to your newsletter, you need to keep their attention. And to do this, that means contacting them regularly and being predictable, which I know sounds like a bad thing. It sounds bad to be predictable, but in this case, it's a good thing. This means asking questions uh, and providing with some sort of value. Some of the things that I do with my list, um, I do monthly polls that are really fun. They're not very serious. There are a lot of GIFs and I try to make it kind of humorous, but also gives me good data on the things that they like, like the fantasy characters that they love, the relationships that they love, what weapons they like. You can really tailor that to your own content. My Goodreads reviews, I read so many books a month and I just stick my reviews in there. All I have to do is kind of copy and paste them in there so it's really easy, fun content that's engaging. I do three to five swaps with other authors uh, every newsletter. So I put those in there. Those are usually free or discounted books. That is some value for them. If I'm participating in any book fairs or sales, or if I have any giveaways that I'm participating in, those will all be there. Uh, once a month, I do a blog post with free 10 free books from um, other authors in my genre. So that's helping me keep them on genre, it's providing them value, and I'm helping other authors, which is really awesome. I also use Amazon affiliate links, so I actually get a little bit of money if they click on them, which is awesome too. I also always ask them how they're doing, and this is really important. I encourage them to share with me how they're doing, and I encourage them to reply to me, which helps my deliverability, and it helps me connect with them on a better level and get to know them. So make sure you're also providing things besides buy my book info. That gets really old. You can have it in there like one time. You can highlight what you've got going on, but you also want to do other things that provide value to your reader. I have a short section at the top of mine where I just tell them a little bit about my life and what's going on. It doesn't have to be glamorous or anything. It can just be trivial. It just helps humanize you uh, to your reader and let them know you are a real human being and you're not just this wall of text that they see. So I mentioned being predictable and consistent. Uh, what I mean by this is that you need to set up a schedule for your newsletter. Uh, you need to be sending it at least once every 30 days to keep your deliverability rate at an optimal level and so that people don't forget about you. It also really helps to create a template or templates according on how many that you want to send a month and that way you already kind of have a set amount of things and your reader knows what to expect because it's in a way that they get used to after a while. It's all laid out the same, but it has different information each time. And it's easy to just drop the information in when you're building it and not have to take four hours to make your newsletter. Okay, our last question is from Jennifer Schlag, and it's, what form of marketing or promotion do you find to be the most successful and won't cost us a fortune to use? This is a double-edged sword because you have to spend money to make money but sometimes it's not always money. You can at least barter something or learn new skills or you know take your time, take time, but time is money. So literally there, there's always a trade-off somewhere. One free and really effective marketing tool is author collaboration. Uh, this can be uh, newsletter swaps, book bob swaps, social media swaps. Um, this can be group takeovers or even interviewing each other on your social media or on your YouTube channel or what else, whatever you've got out there, uh, even in your blog or your newsletter, that really works. Another tool is contacting bloggers or podcasters or people who are like YouTube hosts for shows kind of like Joe. Contact them, they're usually always free. You can also try cutting costs by learning to do some things yourself that you might be hiring out for. Um, like interior formatting, you can get Vellum uh, if you have Mac, which I really suggest. Uh, there's also Atticus out there, which I am not as much a fan of, but it is an easier way to format. Um, there's also, uh, Derek Murphy has some great things on his website about being able to format in Word. You can also write your own blurb if you 
hire out for that. You can make your own promotional graphics. I really recommend getting something like Canva or Book Brush because those make it really easy and it kind of takes the learning curve off of making your own graphics. One great place that I'm gonna tell you about that can help you with cover costs is, and I never say this right, I hope I say it right, Milib Art uh, and Get Covers. They have fantastic designers that really work with you. They're really affordable. Get Covers, I think, starts at $10. It's $10 to $35. And Milib Art, I think, is around $200, but they're fabulous. Some of my best-selling covers are from them, and I do not spend an arm and a leg. You don't have to spend $1,000 for a good marketable cover. They know what they're doing, and I really recommend them. And the last tip I have for this is you can also look for local signings. Um, you can usually do them for free or really cheap by uh, doing the signings at your local library, at bookstores, at small businesses, or even at like a flea market booth. There's lots of really cheap ways that you can get out there, meet people in the public, develop these relationships, and sell some physical books. Okay, that's all for me this month. I'll see you next month. As always, you can email me at info at fiction-atlas.com. If you have any questions, I'm very happy to help you with any of your marketing needs. I also am leaving my websites below, clcanon.net for all my author stuff, and Fiction Atlas for everything publishing and author services. I hope you guys have a great month. I'll see you next time. Bye.